Beyonce has a yes, country. Beyonce, and you know course, what? Yeah. And someone said, you know, good for her. Finally, yeah. I hope she finds some success. Because it's been. <laughs> I'm Allison Hagendorf. America, this is the next. Hello, Times Square. Hello, Madison Square Garden. Welcome to X Games Aspen. I'm Allison Hagendorf. I'm the live announcer of the BMA. Welcome to Rock This with Allison Hagendorf. Y'all, this is Allison Hagendorf. Hello, my fellow music lovers, and welcome to the Allison Hagendorf Show. Hello, my fellow music lovers, and welcome to the Allison Hagendorf Show. This is where we celebrate the universal love of music and the rock and roll spirit that lives in each of us. I'm so glad you're here. We are coming to you from DWP Studios, and I want to give a shout out to our presenting sponsor, Cloudwater, our partners at Sweetgrass Vodka, and our friends at Karma Sauce. These are three quality products I love. They are all part of my life and help make this show possible along with you. Your support means the world to me. Thank you. Today in studio, we have the Black Crows co-founder and frontman, Chris Robinson. Chris and the Black Crows hold a very special place in my heart and in my home. So if you follow me on socials, you know that my passions are food, fitness, family, and of course, music. And this story has a little bit of everything, okay? Picture it, November 14th, 2019, it is my birthday. Now this former New Yorker, of course, has to live on the Sunset Strip right across from the Roxy. I'm going to grab an epic dinner at Dantana's, and two of my favorite bands are playing later that night. Inhaler, a new band you need to know, also happens to be Bono's son's band, but that's not why I love them. They're playing the Roxy, and then the Black Crows are at the Troubadour. It's a perfect night, and you know, the venues are practically like on the same street, so it's not a big deal. However, on this night and on this birthday, I am nine months pregnant with my son, Cole Hendricks, and I'm about to give birth at any second. In fact, Brian actually packed a bag of mine to keep in my Fender Beetle, and more on the car at another time, but just in case I go into labor from the lab music. And secretly, I hope I do go into labor because one, that's really cool and pretty rock and roll, and two, my hospital, Cedars, is down the street. So. We go to the Roxy first, a chair is kindly provided to me, but you know there's absolutely no way I can ever sit during a show. I am belting out every lyric, it's incredible. Inhaler are amazing. If you haven't seen them before, do yourself a favor and go check them out. Incredible show, incredible band. Now on to the Troubadour for the Black Crows, which is really pushing my luck at this point. I'm pretty exhausted and the show must go on though, you know, literally. We get to the Troubadour, ushered up to the balcony, there's a seat waiting for me and of course I can't take it. Instead. I rock out over the railing. This is something I realized I do at shows. The show is so good. The guys were in rare form, and it truly was a night to remember. Now, fortunately, I did not go into labor that night, but we did get a limited lithograph from this show, which I framed, and I put up in Cole's nursery, which is still there. Now, the lithograph has two cartoon crows smoking blunts and drinking, which is probably not appropriate to hang in your baby's nursery, but eh, you know what? It's rock and roll history. Okay, coming up after this short break, we have Chris Robinson here to talk all things Black Crows, including the band's first album in 15 years. Stay tuned. I wanted to introduce you to one of my co-stars of the Allison Hagendorf show is the sexy can that's always next to me on set. This is Cloudwater's Daily Defense. Now they also have their peace, love, and energy as well as CBD. But what I love about this one is that it has prebiotic fibers for gut health. It's infused with vitamin C, D3, and zinc for immune support, which keeps me feeling good and I really need it because my little ones at home are always sick from school. And it's just lightly sweetened with organic wildflower honey so it doesn't have that like funky synthetic aftertaste. I also love this flavor. It is grapefruit, mint, and basil. It is absolutely perfect. Give it a try and let me know what you think. Go to cloudwaterbrands.com and use my promo code Allison30 to get 30% off. And you can also find out where to buy it at a store near you. Cheers. My guest today is the co-founder and frontman of the band, The Black Crows, who have sold over 30 million albums. Their new album, Happiness Bastards, is out now. They are a personal favorite of mine. And to me, this guest is the quintessential rock star. Great vocals, poetic lyrics, timeless style, powerful performance, Chris Robinson. Thank Welcome you very, that's show. very, very kind. You are, you have- And you know one thing, I don't want, it's, I don't want to, uh, punctual as well. And punctual. I mean, we could throw, <laughs> Let's throw in punctual. <laughs> but your, your style I, is I, always I know on it point. is funny. I am probably the most punctual person 
it, that does what I do. You probably are. I, I just yeah. have been funny. I, I've, I've, I, I've, I've always been that way. Really? Even in the midst of like the cocaine blizzard of the 90s. Even no We're matter, still on time. Yeah, that's funny. Isn't that weird? That isn't, actually, it's really more impressive. It's like a superpower. Well, I can thank mom and dad for that. That's very Southern, like, good manners. Kind right, of. they instilled that in you. I, and I would be on time and not overdose at the interview. So <laughs> it was fantastic. Show me your ways. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. This album, I was telling you when you came in, I have now listened to it many, many times. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Like, congrats. It's, Thank it's, you very it's much. A, it is a beautiful album. It's badass. It's like fierce and sexy and sassy and it's got all the swagger. I mean, I think it's some of your best work. I Well, you know, I mean, again, it's everything sounds egocentric if I agree with that. But, it, it you know, it's funny. That's... In a sense, that's a lot of the things that we, that I find interesting and that Rich finds interesting about rock and roll still. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we, we, it's not like it was. It's a stretch, but I think you know, obviously, the last couple of years, putting the band, getting us in this place where we're, it's, it's we're functioning at a high level, and everyone's really happy to be here, yeah. and we, you know, everyone's on the same page. And that sort of sets the stage to be able for Rich and I to do the one thing that we've always done, and that's, you know, write songs. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think in this instance, we, we wanted a record that, 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 that felt that way, that sounded that way. You know, we, we, we were very focused on a high energy, you know, we were like, it's been a, we made a lot of different kind of records in 30 years. Um, which, you know, I think we've always felt was the artist's privilege. Of course. You know, more than... Um, and we also did that uh, against the grain. You know what I mean? Well, it's part of your creative journey. It, as it, a creative. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we weren't, you know, and we just... We don't get into this to fit in. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We get into this because we, we, we didn't fit in. Like so many artists and so many, I mean, I don't, and so many um, music, it just seems to be the fertile ground for that or the one that, of course, I have the closest proximity to, but outsider culture. Um, you know, when we were kids growing up, when my parents made the fatal mistake of moving to the suburbs uh, and like, you know, the, where the great angst of that is right. born. Uh, Rock and roll was like the sonic vandalism of our dreams, you know. Oh my God. But we also oh weren't God. MTV kids. We yeah. weren't, you know, the AOR radio kids. We were, you know, I always say there was, you know, back then uh, in the early days of cable or whatever, the USA Network had some weekend programming on Saturday nights called Night Flight. And Night Flight was. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's like the first time I saw Eraserhead and like they would play The Clash, Rude Boy, that oh, movie. Wow. And okay. there was a show that was very influential to me called New Wave Theater. And it was this really, uh, it's, it's, it actually should just be another podcast about New Wave Theater. But New Wave Theater was like one of those things like, wow, there's all this stuff going on in the world. And New Wave Theater came from Los Angeles with this host, Peter Ivers, and it's the first time you know, I got to see Circle Jerks, Dead Kennedys, uh, 45 Grave. So that was really your introduction. To th There was something else. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, once, you know, I'm the kind of person that to see that, then I could start to put together quickly, well, where is this going on? And so instead of going to the big arena rock shows, we're, like, hiding our, like, little punk outfits in the bushes and telling mom and dad we're going to a party and then we drive downtown and it's like unimaginably dangerous i'm sure if my kids were doing that now i would be kind of worried but but that is kind of um you know there's a spark there and i think in a funny way and i think because of the the shaker moneymaker being the catalyst of, yeah you know the presentation of the last couple of years that put us in, in that frame of reference and that kind of 
focus about, oh, you know, no, we don't, we're not a punk band, but our attitudes have always attitudes, been like that. Yeah. We're not an indie band, but our politics have always been indie rock. And then so to find like the kind of commercial success that we found early was, uh, was a blessing, but also problematic because of our attitudes. And, and, but, you know, as you know, rock and roll meant a lot, something much different up until the last few years. Yeah. You know what I mean? It seems like, so this album is really like a love letter to rock and roll. Yeah, I mean, I, I've said that in it. I mean, even though that's maybe a bit cliche, but it truly is, you know, and it's something that, you know, I think the other thing that I, that I, that I think about the record and that, for me, no matter what well, comes of whatever the future holds for us, like this was a record that Rich and I just, we just had fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you hear you that can tell. too. Like, you do and hear we're that. like, you yeah, do. like this works. Yeah. And I, I, you, there's this, the second track on the record is called Rats and Clowns. Yeah. And it's a very, you know, when you when you get into it, it's like to uh, we love Ace early AC. AC we love AC DC, yeah. and we're like okay. I hear that. And you yeah. can hear that on you Shake can. Your Money Maker, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And then we leave that. <laughs> we don't revisit that for until now, really. Um, but it was just one. Of, I will always look back at the session and be like, Rich and I just because he plays the solo on that, and I was and we did it together with Jay, our producer. And we were just laughing and having so much fun, just like, and that's like the best solo. I mean, one of the best it solos so Rich has ever that played. That solo's insane. And it's yes. like that's kind of, I think, in a way, a small story, but paints a big picture for where we were. Absolutely. For this kind of record. And let's talk about Jay. I mean, having Jay Joyce as the producer. Yeah, super producer. Super producer. I mean, he he's been called the most rock and roll like country producer like the hardest rocking yeah, country yeah. producer he's he's done the full gamut he's so no, unique and, you know and great musician yeah and you know his vocabulary and our vocabulary melded together very well musically and you know we're very lucky like i said to be where we are with the team around us and you know i can't say enough about you know you have to have all the pieces in place to set the stage for something progressive and something positive. Mm -hmm. So for Rich and I to feel taken care of and not, you know, have to look over our shoulders at all, which is trust. Yeah, it and, is trust. And trust in any relationship is like probably the 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 rarest thing and the thing that it's you the know, goal. Yeah, truly. Yeah. Um, and you have to be brave, mm -hmm. you know, and you and, and vulnerable, and you can't let the past times that that has not worked uh, influence, you know, where you're going from there. So, and it's and it's amazing because we, we you know, we had the incredible opportunity to speak to lots of uh, talented people, and there was just something about Jay uh, in our initial, you know, conversation, and. You know, and I, yeah, and then Rich and I also made, we had the conversation like, look, if we're going to work with someone like this, we, we have to, we can't, we can't, just, you know, cop the attitude like, well, well, you know what I mean? And I don't think there was a moment that we didn't feel it just all clicking together, mm -hmm. the mechanics of it, but also in a really subtle and again, progressive way, Jay is a person that could put push Rich and I out of our, I mean, for me as a singer a little bit, there was a couple things where he was like, well, and I, you know, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. All right. And I wanted it to be good. And I liked that. And I know that Rich liked that because it's not like it was heavy handed at all. It's just, and Jay works fast. And, you know, my process is way more visceral and chaotic. I liked, I like a lot of stimuli. I like a lot of mm. sonic information. Uh, to just be going on and yes, that, no, yes, that. And then Rich is probably not as kinetic as that. And Jay's kind of the same. So the flow of it was so good. And I mean, we made the record in two and a half weeks. That is unbelievable. Which is pretty Oh my quick God, pace. that is quick. <laughs> For this day and age. Wow. You know? Which is funny because, you know, Southern Harmony, I think for Black Crows people is considered like our greatest record. And I, I, I understand. I would have to agree in some sense, but you know, we made that record in ten days, right? It's... Which was like, 
our little, you know, guerrilla warfare versus the everyone that it was trying to you know, wrangle us in or whatever that thought they could, you know, because they want they the, the you know how the business is mm-hmm. the the business isn't progressive business isn't visionary. No, you can say that later about people who make lots of money off of people who actually do that. Right, and I get that there's a talent and a nuance to that as well, but. Um, I don't know. I mean, our us versus them. I never took. I would hope that people that we dealt with over the years that we would like be like whatever. Uh, you know, I was telling someone the other day, and I've said it before, but I was like, when it came to the way we dealt with the music business part, people would, you know, whether they'd come to the record companies, people in the manage whatever, anyone who'd come and have it, mostly record companies. If they had an, uh, an opinion or an added, you know, well, I think that, and my point would be, that's great. You can go sell that to the 50 other bands on the right, label. Right, exactly. And you know what? I'll even give you this. You might be right. But if you're wrong, I, your, your mistake is my life. Yes, exactly. And right. I yes. personally, as an artist, uh, I, I would rather take that chance. I would rather be able to take the responsibility of my fuck up other than your fuck up. Because if I, you know, and you see it well, all that's the rock time. And roll. And, yeah. I mean, that's rock and roll. Well, you see it and you read it or you see it in interviews with bands that were happening. And I mean, come on, 30, I've seen a lot of shit come and go in 35 years. Mm-hmm. The, the biggest thing in the world isn't big in two years and it, they, you never hear from them again. And then, But you'll hear interviews and they're like, well, I mean, uh, it was... The record company did a record. I'm like, yeah, what do you, who ever nightmare. told you that they're like, that that was real? Or that yeah. those people really cared about you? Are, you? are you, are you, were you that blind? Or you actually thought that, you know what I mean? Like, well, the regrets are painful enough. So they may as well be choices that you made. That's my point. Yeah. And I can exactly. live with that. Right. It's exactly. easier for me to accept as a, as a human being. And, and, you know, I mean, and again, uh, and it's funny too, as a as a parent, mm-hmm. we were talking. To, yeah. I mean, I'm one of those. My, man, I'm sure my parenting style, whatever. I'm 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 sure I'm not the, the you know, my kids don't have coffee or t-shirt best dad of the year, whatever. <laughs> but one thing that I'm not afraid of is adversity, mm-hmm. and I'm not afraid of it for them. I'm not afraid of it for me because yeah. adversity is really the one factor that. Uh, molds us you know what i mean it how helps you know who you are and how we choose to deal with it right That's you know right. what i mean and, yeah. and hopefully that changes you know mm-hmm. and you have different ways to deal with adversity because it doesn't matter who you are what you are uh, where you are we can't escape those things absolutely right on this album i have some personal favorite moments dirty cold sun is a, is a favorite of mine it is so funky it is so it's like all the funk. I, I hope I'm not overstepping. But you know who told me recently that's their favorite one? Who? Slash. Okay. When I was Slash like, and I. Slash and I. Okay. Twins. Twins. Yeah. <laughs> and I was it's like, my favorite. It is. Well, it's a, you know, I love it too. And, um, and I think, you know, the other thing about this record is, and is like, that's just a, you know, at this point in life, Rich Robinson. That's a classic Rich Robinson that when you hear that guitar come in yeah. and then the, we drop, we bring the backbeat in. I love your vocal on it, though, too. Well, it's funny because the, you know, the one thing that will never change about uh, the work Rich and I do, um, a lot of things have changed in our relationship, but the, in the work that we do, you know, and I've written many songs by myself, different, they don't sound like the Black Crows, but, and he has two. And, but, you know, it's whatever, there's some little thing in whatever Rich, play when we sit down and he plays me the riff, that can really immediately dictate, oh, this is melancholy, this mm-hmm. is uh, uh, frustration, and yeah. anger. And in this case, yeah, that and, that, and I was like, oh, this has to be uh, maybe, you know, more, not angry, but like d- darker. And mm-hmm. that whole, 
idea of like someone's cheating on you mm. with the butcher and yes. how do you know it's the butcher because she has blood streaked, streaked across, across her, her cheek. cheek you know and i was like oh <laughs> i love that lyric so romantic you know that's a great open i love this song yeah uh, so it's funny like it, it, w there's just something about the whatever rich the the way he makes that riff sound is the catalyst for where mm. i don't think just the imagery that i want and I write a lot in scenes. I feel like I'm writing, like to me, that's a scene. Like yes. You could write that I can out. See, I can with, see it. Can't yeah. cut in the camera, you know, the, yeah. the lover's straightening the bed out and mm -hmm. then, you know, whatever. So, but it, that's the way we work. And I but mean, that's why you guys are so special as a dynamic duo. You yeah, really well, do. I mean, and I think that's other. a, if you're going to have a songwriting duo, yeah. And it's a classic uh, dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, yes, we're family, we're brothers, but you know, you, you could bring him in right after me and we're <laughs> completely different people on, 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 on every level. But when we do that, I think that's the good thing, you yeah. know what I mean? That's because, the magic. Yeah, and again, for the, we've always been able to do that. It's just, I think for this record, we, we both, you know, we had a lot of songs and then we, it was easy to say, you know, like I said, we wanted like a, this is a record before you go out Saturday night yes, or you're on the is. way to go somewhere and yeah. you're listening to it. Um, we've made some Sunday morning music and, you know, we've made some Tuesday afternoon music, <laughs> but this is a Saturday night. One. This is a pump up album. You also have your first collaboration on this album yeah. with Lainey Wilson. How cool Amazing. is that? It's awesome. Amazing, yeah. Uh, I guess if you're going to have your first one, go big. Yes. But it's cool because it's subtle. You know, mm -hmm. it's not it like is. one of those country... Like duets. Duets yes, where it's all put I together. Agree. and I It's agree. like, you know... It's a Black Crow song. Yes, and we're and just very lucky yes. that, uh, you know... And that just came about because... Um, you know we're out in the world and uh and we're we we've we're, we're happily in the music business right now mm -hmm. uh and my it was just funny randomly uh when we did the cmt awards last year my wife and i get out of the car to do the red carpet thing and just laney just happened to be there and i i i, I knew she was just because i keep i you know obsessively i know about all sorts of things in music, I just keep my, whether or not I'm listening to country music that much or not, you know what I mean? I'm just like, okay. You're aware. Yeah. Yes. And she was so lovely and sweet. And she's like, oh, you know, I grew up in this little town. I'm like, oh, you, she did. Like 800 people in her hometown or something. Mm -hmm. um, and she was just lovely, lovely person. And uh, and was like, I love the Black Crows. And, and Camille, my wife, and I were like, oh, what a sweetie. And then, you know, Jay makes this, re her, latest, right. her latest record, which is a big deal. Yeah. And, um, you know, I th we really, the, the song is called Wilted Rose. Yep. We really like the song. We only, we, we only have two ballad -y moments on the record. And he was like, man, Lainey would sound great on this. And we were like, all right, I mean, you know her, you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah, so it just worked out to be, and I think it's perfect, like I said. It in is a perfect. Real, in a really... Yeah. Our voices sound really good together, and we don't make a big to-do over it, and it's just a soulful uh, connection. It just goes. The, it really does. Yeah. And you know what? Rock and country are so entwined now, maybe more than ever. You know, they have, like, Dolly Parton in her rock star album and, and artists like Jelly Roll and Hardy. So it's, like, this really, like, And, you know, I saw fusion. that... Uh, Beyonce has a yes, country. Yes, you know what? Yeah. And someone said, you know, good for her. Finally, yeah. I hope she finds some success because it's been <laughs> very hard for her uh, in the world of music and media yes. for Beyonce to get something going. So, yes. you go, babe. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, rock and roll is country music, yeah, and but rock and roll is the great, you know, gumbo of all those things. It is. And, it is. you know, that's always been... You know, the our, the Black Crows, it's always been our great wellspring. But I do have to say, you know, as the 90s progressed, um, it was hard watching everyone else my age and my peer group be accepted as something. And we were all, I mean, it's fine. I mean, we've always been weirdos. 
but because uh, the Roots music was so important in our inspiration. Yes. And we didn't really have a um, prejudice against funk, soul, R&B, rock music, early rock and roll, Jerry Lee Lewis, Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, the Everly Brothers, uh, you know, whatever, Ike and Tina Turner. You know, we allowed those things to be a part of our musical of language. and That's what was true to you. That yeah, was yeah, you. That but was it you. also separated us. Mm -hmm. it also but was, for the better. Yeah, well, I think, you know what I mean? And it's funny, as you know, in the year 2024, a lot of those... I don't know, stigma is probably the wrong word, but a lot of those uh, I don't know, genres, yeah. specific, yes. they seem to have gone by the wayside. You're absolutely right. Especially for younger people. They would never know the rules of the 80s right, of and course. 90s. You right. know what I mean? Like guilty like, pleasure, stuff you, like that. doesn't exist anymore. Go to a Black right. Flag show in a Def Leppard t-shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> and see in what 1983. Yeah, exactly. Get back to me exactly. on how that worked out for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even have long hair going there, yeah. you know what I mean? Or vice versa. You couldn't like, you know, yeah. You couldn't rock the, you know, MDC T-shirt at the, uh, you know, metal show right, or whatever. It was funny that way. The authenticity was hardcore. Yeah. yeah. And that is a funny thing. Uh, I like the way it is now. Yeah. And it's good for me too. Like, you know, I, I've said it a few times, but like one thing in particular, like a couple months ago, we went to see Depeche Mode at the oh, Forum. Awesome. And my wife's a huge Depeche Mode fan. And then when, when we first got together, she played Depeche Mode. And I'm like, I had a couple of guilty, you know, Everything Counts was like a song that I really liked. But, and I always knew like that. But then, you know, in the 80s, they were synth band. And we yeah, were like. I get it. You know, we wanted guitars. Roots. We wanted guitars also to be important. You know, we liked guitar stuff. Yeah. Um, but now, Dave Gahan has put on one of the best front men I've ever seen. Yeah. Hit after hit. And like records that are full of fan wonderfully crafted mm -hmm. songs in any genre. And like, and it was one of the best shows I've ever seen. And That's like, awesome. you know, subsequently I've been listening a lot to those records over the last seven years or whatever, more than. Than you ever have. Yeah, but I can yeah. put them in a place where, oh, I mean, but I also listen to, you know, I, I wouldn't listen to them with the same prejudice about the instrumentation that we yeah. would have had in the 80s as like little dirty rock and rollers. Well, you, you know? had to be like myopic and true. <laughs> well, well, there were rules, like there I were, said. There, there were rules. There, were there like really were rules. Cultural rules but so. now it's like almost the opposite where it's cool to be as unexpected do you think now that you've collaborated with laney that maybe you would be open to more collaborations or of course yeah yes of course what about like revisiting with jimmy page you know or like just well more... i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> the great yeah. whatever jimmy wants jimmy gets That's you exactly, know what I mean? yeah, and, uh, yeah. uh yes jimmy knows that as well but I think, you know, I mean, I I'm think that's... putting it out there. Yeah. Like no, no. <laughs> There's a few songs we didn't get to that I, that I would like to play. I mean, that was 20 years ago. It's wild. Um, yeah. But no, I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, you it know is. What I mean, I think... Uh, I think we're far more open as people um, for anything that's a good idea or that feels comfortable or not sometimes to get at. I mean, there's certain things, yeah, that I don't think that I would need to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there's still, I mean, let's be honest. There still has to be something interesting in it for me to be a part of it. Of course. Other than just the irony of it or, you know, this looks good. You know, the same thing with the, with the record. Like, we could have, you know, I think a lot of bands who have the kind of, careers that we've had who haven't made a record in a long time yeah. you might see them chasing something mm -hmm. that's not them to kind of get over um, but that's not you guys i know and we that's could what never do love oh my like, can you imagine yeah. oh my god we we upset our fans enough sometimes they've stuck with through a lot of funny stuff with us but i think but, that's what's refreshing and that's why the band the fans are so hardcore is because you've always kept it real you've well, always kept it true you, to can, you you know people have always you just said the word authenticity yeah and uh that's not a word you can throw around no. with you know and you know what rock and roll and art has always been full of pretentiousness mm -hmm. it's part of it it is 
You know what I mean? And there are some things that were viewed pretentious at a certain time with certain artists and with uh, subsequent works and, um, and and the flipping of the calendar proves itself that it's not. Yeah. You know, and people can, you know. I think in our case, it was never a question of our authenticity. Meanwhile, 40 years later. Next year. The reason I know is because the very first, the very first show that we ever played, I mean, we played parties and a few things for, for, you know, high school things. But the very first time we played, got booked, played in a club, we were paid $50. The guy said, I don't have cash. Can I write you a check? And, I, and we were savvy enough even then to go, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. Check bounced, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we played in Chattanooga, Tennessee at a place called the Nucleus Club. But it was the same day as Live Aid was going on. Oh, so my God. There was no That's one there. You know, the and like, yeah. you know what I mean? And we opened for some band from, a band from San Francisco, I believe. They were called Yo. And I still see their, their they made like That's one record. That's awesome. I still yeah. see their record in the record store occasionally. Like in the, in the you know, used record store. But yeah, everyone watched Live Aid yeah. except for us. But... I, I I always remember we drove up there. Rich was 15, so he couldn't even drive, which was funny because right after he turned 16, we never, I mean, we were just too fucked up to drive. So Rich was always the sober. We always had a designated driver. Um, Smart. But some friends came up from Atlanta. Chattanooga's not very far. It's like, what, 90 miles, not even whatever. But I, I just, it was one of those things that when, you know, we got on stage to do our little sound check and the PA is kind of crackling <laughs> and there was just something uh, really electric about it. And I can still tap Aww. into what that felt like. Wow. And uh, we opened with There She Goes Again by the Velvet Underground. Mm -hmm. Dun, 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 you know, and we had our little... We, we wanted to look like we were in the birds, you know, mm -hmm. so we had like our bangs and our, we would take our pants and you know, like, uh, take safety pins to make yeah. them like stovepipes. And that's awesome. But that was, you know, uh, that's really to me the first day. OK, the first we we're, we're real. We're a real band. then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. So forty dollars. By the way, fifty dollars in nineteen eighty five was probably I'll... worth fifty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> So 40 years of the band. So Shake Your Money Maker then is turning 35 yeah. next year. Mm. What's so crazy to think about is that that, that was your debut album. Like that, you gotta like start that's somewhere. The, like that's insane. Like you, it was four singles, four videos on MTV. I mean, you guys really catapulted. It wasn't like a gradual introduction. Yeah. You were you were opening for Aerosmith. Right off the gate, right? I right was 24 years old that summer, and I opened for Stephen and Robert Plant. That's insane. As the little front man. So what did that do to you? Like, what is that experience like? I cannot even imagine. Well, I mean, one, one thing is that, you know, we, we, you know, we dream, you know, you dream up a band, you know? That was my, that's what I did, you know? Uh, and 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 then you know ri bringing Rich along in it is is how we did it. Mm -hmm. um, I think, like we were saying, culturally rock and roll meant something very different. Um, and we grew up in a little you know, like I said, by the time I move out of the house, you know, I moved out of the house. Well, I was thrown out of the house in '87. And why were you thrown out? My dad just was like, he'd said, you want to be Mick Jagger, you can do it somewhere else. I see. You're, you're, this is bullshit. You come in my, you come home at four in the morning. You know what I mean? Like, and he didn't think you were going to make it. Like no, he just thought that no. was like grandiose ideas. You know, he was a singer. He was a musician. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that there was part of it maybe that he, part of it maybe was, safety mm -hmm. because you know it's pretty Stuff. gross yeah, <laughs> especially <it's> brutal. <laughs> yeah not just you know the 
because I don't think he really knew about the road. And but my dad wasn't, you know, my dad was had a great voice. Really, when he was a folky, had a beautiful finger picking style and very authentic to what he was interested in. But my dad wasn't a writer. He wasn't uh -huh. a songwriter. He wasn't a my dad wasn't a weirdo in the same way that. Um, that we would be, that, that, that I would be considered, yeah. a, you know. Um, but it was also in that scene we came around, everyone in our scene got major label deals eventually, or before it off, some of them. It was, but we were all like the uh, reluctant, to, you know, uh, our. Our, our mouths were saying, we don't want, we're, we're, right, we're right. going to do it. But then our, our ambitions were Chorus. saying something else. Um, you know, and I can't say enough about George Duculius. Um, now he won a Grammy for the Barbie soundtrack. He, he, I, I can't get him on the phone. But <laughs> before he was important in Hollywood, he was a dirtbag like we were. But I can't say enough about George because, you know, he was the one who pushed us, you know, he saw us, he, he saw us at a place in New York in 1988. So, you know, from the time the summer, I move out of my parents to, we make Shaker Money Maker is 24 months. That's unbelievable. You know I mean? so yeah. We were, we were really. Maybe moved. you needed that push. We were moving yeah. fast. But he was the one who like, and I, 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 the story is Jealous Again, yeah. our first single from the first record, is also a song that Rich and I considered to be our first grown-up song. And, yeah. you know, we had the... Okay, we got it. Put it on a little cassette. Send it to New York for George to hear. And he'd get it in the mail and he'd call up and go, oh, it's pretty good, buddy, but uh, maybe get in there again. And we'd be like, fuck, all right. Now we have the the middle section. It's pretty good, but man, you know. So he was the one who's like, "It's not great until it's great." That's great. And yeah. work and hard work, and I don't think, again, any no matter what we've, no matter what pile of shit we ever stepped in or what self, uh, destructive things, whatever we did. Uh, the hard work, we've always worked hard. Mm -hmm. And songwriting is a craft. Yes, it and, is. And, you know, and I feel it's the thing that really, it, it's what makes you, you know, <clears throat> before we thought about ourselves as musicians or as a performer, you know what I mean? I, had, I mean, when I'm opening in, for Steven and Robert Plant, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to be. <clears throat> it's the first time you do anything, you know, yeah. and the first time is, uh, it's, it's wonderful, you know what I mean? Because you can, you have all this stuff to see what works. For I you. mean, you had you, two of the greatest, two of yeah. the greats. I mean, did that inspire you to, to help, to figure out what your... Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. what your... Because I knew, obvi obviously, and it's, and it's, that's a funny thing to bring us around to today like in terms of being a front man or whatever not a, there's not a lot of that anymore in yeah. the way the classic way that right. we consider the like the, those people were my heroes too yeah um and you know even to be with steven you know today yeah. you know he knows that i you know so he knows circle. that i love i love he's a he's a wonderful person but i love him as a front man and um didn't he give you your first harmonica? He did. Oh, he did. that's awesome. He did. That is awesome. And I reminded him that the other day. He said, what that's key so was it? Special. I was like, I don't fucking that's remember. So like, he goes, A. It was A. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like okay, if you that's say so. Crazy. so. I sure it wasn't E, you know, but he's funny. But that's uh, a lot of pressure right out the gate. Like, you know, touring with the greats, being so young, partying. I, I mean, so I can't say, too, you know, like Aerosmith, they were in there really hanging on to sobriety right and we're just starting and we're fucking luckily for us we didn't have enough money to get into drugs yet but booze and uh we were just that was the thing we knew we wanted to get out there we had no idea that that this is what it would look like 
or that you'd have that kind of career. Yeah. Um, we just knew that we wanted to get out there and squeeze it for every ounce of juice we could get. And, you know, we're going to Europe, you know, in our band, you know, like, oh my God, you know, well, the, but it's, it also set up the culture of the Black Crows. And I, I have great friendships still from those first experiences. And, you know, um, and it's funny, the, being a, in a touring band, uh, doing it the way we do, it wasn't for everybody. And it's mm -hmm. still not. And, you know, that idea, like a shake, shake your money maker, 350 shows in 18 months. That's, that kind of shit doesn't happen no. anymore. You'll never see that culture yeah. again that that era mm -hmm. um and you lose your mind and you know and and with the success it would be one thing if we did that and then went you know and it did pretty good and then we had the chance to make another you know you you have you know you see some careers that they can yeah ebb and flow figure kind of. out so yeah. we had to figure it out it was like you know yeah shove you out of the helicopter right yes. into the you know the dmz <laughs> you know like but by the way fantastic yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean? I. Is there anything you would go back and nothing. say to yourself? No. 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 Just you did everything worked out the way it was supposed to work out. I, you couldn't have told me anything. My older self couldn't have told me anything anyway. Right. And again, the mistakes are made to learn from, not yeah. to repeat. Um, the 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 only thing I think that is better now, but I also sometimes have to, you know. Find it is. I, I, I think it's better that young artists can discuss mental health mm. and depression and, um, you know, I'm old school person who, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger right, kind right. of mm -hmm. dumb bullshit, you know? Um, and addiction even. I mean, now yes. it's so, everyone talks about it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I just took it all on... Uh, as part of the fabric of what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, when your heroes are fucking Keith Richards and, you know what I mean? It's like, he, yeah, I'm sure Keith Richards didn't wake up one day and go, man, I'm, I don't feel good. I'm sure, you know what I mean? In my romantic mind, mm -hmm. you get on with it. And I'm Southern, we're Southern, and in the South that we come from, the Atlanta that we come from is a very English construct. Yeah. And you don't really, English people don't hug each other. You know, we're huggy, you know, we're not totally that way, but the pressure of it and the frustration and disappointment of things, mostly personal things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, by the end of the nineties, I don't know if I would say I was a, a drug addict, but I definitely had reached a certain point where I just really didn't, I was just so disillusioned and mm -hmm. heartbroken. You know? How did you kind of combat this obstacle, this, this, this dark time? I How did broke you... up the band. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and, but that's funny too, yeah. because now, now I have a new set of problems. I've done that twice in the Black Crow. Right. Right. Um, and I get how, you know, I'm sure Rich, I know Rich took it more personally than, but the second time we did it is, is again, that's the fertile ground for us to be where we are today. Yeah. And, you know, very publicly, I was like, I said, you know, I've said nasty things about Rich. And, and he has said nasty things about me too. But I knew, like, at a certain point, you know, you talk about bands and money. And I was like, okay, I, I, this, this. Whatever this is, there's no way I'm going to do this one more day unless, and I knew I could blow up the whole scene by mentioning one word, and that was money. Mm -hmm. And I, di I did that purposely. And uh, I, but the best part of it, and you know, Rich went off and did his solo career. I, I did my solo career. My solo career was very different presentation very different musically visually energy everything and i needed to take the heat off the kettle you know that yeah. whistle had been blowing a long time but without doing that 
we couldn't have reached the perspectives that we have exactly. now. Exactly. Sometimes you, know? you kind of need to hit rock bottom in a way so you can see or feel. I mean, for me, it wasn't even that. It was because I didn't stop making music. I just couldn't be a part of the music business. Right. I couldn't be a part of whatever the culture around the Black Crows had turned into. I didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, I did. I, yeah. I had to. So I went off and did made all these records and did thousands of shows, and but it had nothing to do with the Black, Black Crows, Crows, and yeah. we had nothing to do with the music business. The way yeah. And again, I, I my soul needed to do that, yeah. and my heart needed to it's do important. that. Important. But in the same way that these are all interconnected. Not only do, do, do I take the heat off for me and I can be, put, put myself in a creative place without all of that static, but I also found the love of my life after many years of, you know, uh, I'm not afraid to fall in love, but um, that's a huge part of being able to put your pieces in, an order as yeah. in, in order as well and not be, I don't have to question any of the motivations or yeah. any of the, I don't have to read between the lines or understand the subtext to uh, have my heart in the place that in my soul that it's been since that part of yeah. life too, which is really important for, you know, because you can laugh and be cynical and funny and, you know, a little bit sassy or whatever, but, you know, we're all driven to this because of a certain sensitivity. No matter, no, it doesn't matter who you are. Even David Lee Roth, right. I'm sure, <laughs> right, is, is sensitive right. somewhere under that weird smile or whatever. Right. You know, I, don't, I don't know why I picked him. <laughs> but it's like it's all like it was all meant to be because I feel like Camille probably in your relationship was almost like a a catalyst for this for this current chapter. Completely. You and Rich reconnect. And you know when 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 she uh, and I fall in love it we we don't it's yeah it's uh we're out in the woods man you know what i mean like yeah. it's we're not uh <laughs> yeah we're not living like the way the black crows mm -hmm. had been and and where we are now um which is amazing too yeah. on a lot of levels to have more success at this time in your life than you had even when you were very right. in the most commercial of course. parts of you it's know the record in a different way exactly yeah and the record you know the record business is different and and back then record sales was the driving yes. factor that would constitute what was successful and not in a commercial way not in an in an artistic way it seems like you're really in a, in a good place right now you and Rich. No, yeah, it's a, it's Camille, great. Camille, your kids. How are, how are you feeling right now? It's good, you know what I mean? I have two, I mean, both of my kids are from other relationships, but they're they're both on the East Coast, and they, you know. Ryder's a musician. Yeah, Ryder's a great right? guitar player. And my 14-year-old is a is a musician. She's That's a, a I didn't realize bass that. player. Yeah, she is. She's a very serious and dedicated bass player. That is incredible. And so, yeah, writer, you know, they're both wonderful, sincere, honest, creative. Uh, I, I couldn't be, you know, and I, I just love the way my kids interact with the world. Oh. I'm very proud of that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what do you we, hope that we, they learn from you? Uh, honesty, and I hope that they learn, again, that adversity is something yeah. we can get through. Yeah. And I, I know that they've already learned, they know what to order at most restaurants around the world. And <laughs> I love that. They, I love that. They know, like, that... You know the pursuit. They share of, your appreciation of good food. Uh, you know yeah, what I, mean. I love that. And, That's great. That's really great. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. And you know, it might be a little bougie, but uh, I'm glad that they know like that. What's important in life uh, are the the simple things. I love that. <laughs> All right, let's do deep cuts. Okay, name a song, album, or artist that changed your life. Uh, just one. Or you could do a couple. I mean, Whatever. there's there's so many. Yeah. But I mean, there's a certain there's a certain trilogy of artists that remain. I don't even know <clears throat> if they come out in the way that you would think. You know, like you would think I would say Otis Redding or Keith or the P Funk or whatever. But Graham Parsons, mm -hmm. 
hugely important artist and records and music from International Submarine Band, the Burritos, to GP. I, I just couldn't imagine Alex Chilton mm -hmm. and Big Star. And I cherry picked the difficult years of Alex. Uh, I always have a great story that we opened for Alex Chilton in the 80s and um, when people really didn't think that Mr. Crow's Garden probably were going to be the Black Crows today. Uh, and we played at this, there was a club in Atlanta called the Cotton Club. Everyone played there. We opened for Alex Chilton like on a Monday night. No one came. No one cared. I think it was around Flies on Sherbert, maybe a little after that. But, I, you know, we were huge Big Star fans since, you know, yeah. the early 80s when we first heard about Big Star, probably through R.E.M. and Let's Active and right. the DBs and bands like that. And he came in our dressing room and goes, you guys got a pretty good little band. And we were like, we do? We were like, really? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and the other one of those That's three awesome. would be Sid Barrett. And, mm -hmm. you know, so Graham, Alex, and Sid are, are maybe, I don't know if people would put that together, but those are like three artists and they're the records that they've made that are really uh, integral mm -hmm. things for me. That's awesome. That's, that's an amazing story. Big star. I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> and I always remember, too, we were like, you know, we got to, and I looked at his, you know, we, the dressing rooms were the same size. So he had the same little room that we had, but he had like a giant bag of weed in his. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever seen that much weed in, yet, what, yet at one place. <laughs> at that point. And I was like, yeah. wow, he has so much weed. Oh, I didn't even right. smoke weed then. It was funny. Uh, what is a song you wish you wrote? Oh dear. Maybe ever fallen in love with someone you shouldn't fall in love with by the Buzzcocks. Oh, it's a great song. That is a great song. If you weren't a musician, what would you be? Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, my 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 plans before I allowed my self to do to be confident enough or to think that I could do it uh, I thought I would I was going to study and go to school or drop out of school which I did anyway to be a writer I thought I would be a writer a real writer mm -hmm. a novelist yeah uh, if I had maybe if n n that would be my younger self my older self maybe I would it, I, I don't know maybe I would have gone into some sort of Cuisine. I was driven. gonna say some culinary. I definitely <laughs> either a food critic or a chef I'm or a critic, maybe a chef. Restaurant uh, Yeah, something yeah. like like. I mean, it's a huge. Uh, it, it's it's it was always a, a, another motivating factor to get out into the world. Mm -hmm. I think being southern, I had a great understanding of regional identity, and part of southern identity is the cuisine, which of course is also important because there's so much. Africa and, Cultures, and yes. so much that's where Influence. so many things come together that aren't driven by uh, fear and ignorance mm -hmm. um, I don't know though do you it's cook? Hard... I do you do? I do what's what's your what's your favorite dish what's like <laughs> what's your best dish well I don't know I can't say my I mean I like to cook I can cook many things you know what I mean I like to cook I mean when I for me I would like to cook like French like chicken dishes and like but they're kind of heavier so mm -hmm. but I cook all sorts of things but my my wife's thing that that she wants me to cook all the time is borscht really that's Camille's favorite yeah you're borscht yeah okay you heard it here first I know. <laughs> that's see me on the corner of Fairfax and Santa Monica Chris and my, says borscht my little borscht magic. my little borscht cart yeah. I don't know every that's we have amazing. we have we always have people over for borscht night but <laughs> And Who knew? I know, yeah. I know. And people are always we like... We always have people over for Borscht Night. We do. It's incredible. There's a, one of my favorite bands is this band from Atlanta, a punk band called The Black Lips. And they're yes. a great band. Yes. <laughs> and, and they like your Borscht too? Well, yeah, um, yeah. They came and they were like... Dit. Not all of them, but not, not the whole band. Okay. Cole and Zoomy. Yeah. And, they, and, and Cole's a guitar player. Like He'll love it. He was like... This is borscht. I was like, I was like, yeah. He was like, wow. I never had this before. Can I have more oh borscht? I mean, I was like, 
You just, I don't know. It's just a fun, it's fun. That's amazing. Well, I was going to ask what's something fans might be surprised to learn about you. And skills. I think it's that it's your borscht. My borscht skills. Yeah. Wow. And it's fun. <laughs> it's funny because we're, my grandfather's people were Polish Jews. So there's an Eastern European connection mm -hmm. that maybe is deeper than I imagined before. And it only, I could only really express myself through my borscht. Oh my God, I'm dying. What is, what's the greatest risk you've ever taken? I think I'm still taking it, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. And allowing myself to, allowing myself to never, um, n not allowing myself to, to stop with my attitudes, you know what I mean? Yes. My attitudes about, you know, being an artist, I was always open, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was always, but as a, you know, I, I don't have uh, white male guilt, but I also ha I'm suspicious of the white male mm -hmm. in this society. And I'm, I, I think that being able to always push myself to a more progressive and a more open and uh, understanding acceptance of everything around me yeah. is probably... I, I would say, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And I, and I, I, I would, Absolutely. You know, I just turned 57 in December and I, I see people uh, that aren't flexible. Yep. Um, and again, I realize I've always been a little bit on the, I'm an outsider, so I've always understood, I've always had, and I've just always had a, a, I think a unique perspective on social and cultural things mm -hmm. that way. Right. Mine are empathy. Yeah. Well, and trying to work harder on that, and 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 all my personal relationships and my relationship. Um. I don't want. I I don't. You know, my mind is never. I can still my mind. It's not like that. But I I I I rarely don't. You know, I'm not interested in politics. Mm -hmm because it's the same game. It's always been the same game and it's always the same people. It's like, it's like gambling. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, the house yes. rules, man. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. a stacked against the, the yeah. gambler. Um, but that, you know, I would, you know, I, I do it, I do it with my art. I yeah. do it with, you know, I've tried to do it with all my relationships, mm -hmm. you know, and, does that mean that it's, uh, you know, it's not perfect, of course. Um, but I don't know if people would know that about me, really, mm -hmm. because they only get to see the kind of, of course. smart ass side. <laughs> How far can you get on being a smart ass? Yeah. Well, thank you. And thank you for this, for this new chapter and this new album. Cheers. It's really, really, really special. Yeah, we're yeah. happy. And again, to me, Happiness Bastards is like, a big arrow pointing forward for us. You know, it's like a road sign. It feels um, that way. And it's it really nice. Does. And it opens up not just for the Black Crows, but for lots of other things, you know, um, musically for us. And just, you know, in terms of our expression, and, and I think, um, and besides all that bullshit, it's just fucking nice just to rock. Yeah. I, <laughs> Thank I see you. so much yes. stuff that's precious and yes. nice. and this and that yeah. and, and it's cool but whatever just happened to you know like rock, rock. rock and i like it and it's there there's lots of it yeah it's just not in your face um this so album is we're happy I'm, to yes. be just it seems simple on one end but rock and roll is uh is important to us it you is. know and to us thank you chris Cheers. amazing we'll be right back so Chris is just the coolest. I always feel so grateful to sit here and to hear all about his stories and his journey. It's really just such an inspiration and makes me feel very grateful to be sitting here. Thank you so much for being part of the Allison Hagendorf Show presented by Cloudwater. I want to give a huge thank you to our other partners as well. Danny Wimmer Presents, Sweetgrass Vodka, and Karma Sauce, and most importantly, 
thank you. I would love to hear from you. So please like, comment, rate, review, whatever you're feeling, and reach out to me on socials at Ali Hagendorf. I would love to connect with you. Let me know who I should interview next and what made you smile today. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. And remember, you're a rock star.